share things on Linux uh, properly. Bam. Bam. And uh, bam. I hope you see my screen. Yes. <laughs> I will try not to do a lot of uh, switches to, to any compiler uh, in the meantime, just to keep it smooth. And the topic of today's presentation is undefined behavior in C++. The main spoiler is that there's more of it than you most probably think right now. Here is the agenda. I will talk about uh, what undefined behavior is. Uh, is it the only problematic behavior you can encounter in C++? Uh, what damage can it do? And also how to detect it and to prevent it uh, if uh, possible. Yeah, and uh, I think that we can start. There's also a hidden agenda of making everyone aware of the problem, especially people who used to program in uh, more high level languages and then uh, switched to C and uh, C++. Uh, I will have some uh, code examples in here, but uh, a forewarning is that sometimes they don't break on the first run. You need to sit and uh, refresh uh, the execution of the program several times to see any suspected behavior. What is uh, actually uh, anticipated if you are aware of how uh, undefined behavior works? And uh, yeah, uh, if you want, uh, you can uh, paste uh, all uh, examples I will be running on your own compiler of choice and see if there's anything uh, suspicious because uh, some of them will produce warnings, some will produce uh, errors under some circumstances, and uh, some will just happily proceed to executing uh, whatever you're running. And uh, it's uh, not a good thing, uh, at least uh, not uh, for this sort of exercises. And uh, yeah, before we start, uh, let's focus on uh, these two topics, uh, because uh, maybe your mind about uh, both of them will change during the lecture. Of course, no warranty in here. First topic uh, you may think about for a while is uh, is undefined behavior really problematic and uh, bad? And uh, is there any way or any, let's say, standard uh, which uh, assures that uh, undefined behavior will be fully eliminated uh, in the future? Or maybe there are some ongoing attempts to eliminate it in current standards? Okay, I'm giving you a moment to ask yourself these uh, questions right now, and uh, I strongly advise you to asking them again in the end of my presentation. I will use it as a water break for myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's proceed then. Here's the problem connected with these questions. Why is undefined behavior still a thing uh, in uh, this year? Why has been around since the very beginning of uh, C and C++ language? And not only these two languages. Uh, yeah, let's think about it for a moment. Uh, if you program uh, long enough, especially in C and C++, maybe not in Rust, uh, unless you write a lot of unsafe things, everyone has some really problematic case uh, which uh, happened to them at some point, and uh, this case still bothers them up, even if it occurred many, many years ago and uh, the problem was uh, patched by some workaround. If you have any, feel free to share them in the chat. Uh, if I did some interview with my senior dev friends, everyone had at least one case. I actually have uh, two cases. I may even share them uh, now. One case uh, was uh, the least uh, interesting one in terms of low-level development. 
it was uh, doing some uh, call to some uh, C++ uh, black box API. And uh, after a lot of investigation, it turned out that uh, for some set of inputs, which wasn't like corner case or anything, we were getting uh, addresses in memory which were completely wrong and prohibited, and we got uh, application crashes. The reproduction ratio was maybe one per 1,000 runs, so you couldn't tell a lot about it and reproduce it uh, to get any more information not on which uh, input are uh, on which inputs can be wrong or which are fine. And the second one is even more interesting, and it actually led me to prepare this presentation because we were using uh, back in the days uh, some 3D rotor, which was just uh, moving, being moved by some set of actuators. And for these actuators, you just passed them a set of coordinates and they needed to reach to these coordinates to accomplish some operation there, let's say. But uh, several times, uh, this uh, set was completely wrong. They got values instead of, uh, let's say, numbers from uh, minus 100 to 100, which we were using. They got some numbers which were really big uh, integer values close to the boundaries of uh, integer size, and they were going somewhere far away. The trouble was that our workspace was uh, actually set uh, in coordinates from around uh, 100, so that they were going fast through all the workspace, uh, destroying whatever was on their, uh, on their way. I still don't know what was wrong in there. I guess some true crime authors could uh, write a great series about it, because we tried to reproduce it with... Uh, all optimization flags, uh, all sets of uh, environments, and it mostly worked. Actually, it was so nasty that uh, it never broke uh, during testing. It only randomly broke uh, during a standard uh, mode of operation. Unfortunately, <laughs> the project is already closed and dismantled in somebody's cupboard, so the mystery remains. And it's my personal white whale, which uh, started me thinking more about possible results of undefined behavior. And uh, let's say there are several code behaviors uh, defined by C standard. Uh, so code behavior can be defined either by specification of a programming language of choice. Mostly it's uh, C something standard. It may be defined by implementation in some cases. So the standard uh, gives some brief uh, hints uh, what needs to be done and how it's uh, done exactly depends on the compiler. And uh, everything what is not defined by these two is considered uh, undefined uh, behavior. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the trouble is that, as you can see, in case something is not defined by programming language uh, nor uh, by compiler implementation, then there's no warranty by the compiler that something will or will not uh, happen. Yeah, the question remains. Okay, why is that? We had a lot of time to fix all the holes, didn't we? Maybe. Uh, there is also this uh, nice excerpt from uh, the rational document uh, that uh, the, uh, if something is uh, not uh, included uh, in implementation of particular compiler or in the standard, uh, then the standard uh, doesn't uh, warranty anything or can even describe uh, what will be outcome of uh, doing these things. Yeah, and uh, just to uh, be strict about it, uh, there are three different terms. Uh, these are undefined behavior, implementation specific behavior, where uh, what happens uh, depends of uh, details of a binary interface or particular platform. So things which are not uh, tied to the programming language we're using, 
An example can be size of an integer is the most basic one, but other example is uh, accessing a non-active uh, union member. Luckily, if uh, you are using C++17, you don't need to use them anyway, and it's <laughs> not uh, permitted to do this. However, uh, sometimes uh, during interviews, uh, there is this ongoing question, how to check uh, processor's uh, NDNS, and uh, the, let's say, very slav science answer is uh, to declare an union with uh, two members and to make one of them float, the other one, let's say, long, to declare a, a float, I think, if I'm messing it up, then uh, my apologies. Uh, and you are checking the inactive member and, uh, ba and basing uh, on its uh, shape, you can guess the processor NDNS. But don't do this. Uh, I only needed this knowledge uh, twice in my life uh, during uh, job interviews and it was uh, all. So in this case, uh, we are depending on the platform details. We cannot, uh, for example, always assume that uh, ah, we are in a big Indian. So in this case, we will always get a big Indian representation and uh, we will base our program's core logic on uh, purely this fact. And there's also unspecified behavior, which is a whole in documentation making uh, our code uh, fully depending on our, uh, our implementation, like a compiler. Here's a nice uh, motivational example, which is uh, drawing an owl. Here, the documentation, I mean, this picture doesn't tell anything about, uh, about uh, drawing the O, so you cannot make any assumption that this and that uh, happened or that uh, no side effect happened at all. And uh, it's uh, sometimes a problem, of course, but uh, these two things are not undefined behavior per se. And uh, one more thing uh, which is pretty problematic is uh, how C++ uh, creates uh, variables. Uh, here. So object initialization doesn't mean uh, like in Java that uh, we always have uh, some default value assigned to it. And uh, initialization doesn't uh, mean that assi any assignments took place. Basically, initialization is just uh, giving uh, some uh, address to the object. Uh, I mean, assignment is just giving uh, the address to the object. And is initialization uh, assumes that this object uh, already exists and uh, add uh, it uh, some uh, known uh, value. If we forget, uh, if we just assigned uh, uh, a value to object which was double deleted. Yeah, it also may do some bad things. Anyway, uh, we need to both uh, initialize uh, something and then uh, assign some uh, value to this object. Uh, if we forget to assign any value, we just uh, have uh, object which is some memory address and it is equal to whatever is in this memory address. Uh, can it be something valid? Better not. Uh, in the best case, uh, this is just some uh, rubbish value. In the worst case, uh, we have a value which is uh, perfectly valid and uh, may do some uh, really problematic things uh, where it's uh, processed uh, further in your code. And uh, yeah, first uh, question is uh, there are several nasty behaviors, uh, and uh, my question is, uh, which of these cases will result in a compiler error? I cannot check the chat, so you may just read the list and uh, think uh, that uh, you are doing a pure DCC run with no additional flags uh, like uh, W error or W all. And uh, in which case uh, we have a warranty. Okay, cool. In this uh, new Zoom, I can actually see the chat. Nice thing. I can see the chat. <laughs> <laughs> 
we okay. have we have one uh, answer yep. modulo zero mm -hmm. okay so let's proceed to the answer and answer is in none of these cases uh, actually modulo zero generated only a wording even though it's uh, one of the most common ways to invoke an undefined uh, behavior in c plus plus and it's of course uh, absolutely pointless and uh, regarding first uh, two uh, cases uh, they may seem like a completely legit code because uh, in the first case you are just using uh, i as an index and then you are doing a post incrementation so yeah fine we're doing post incrementation and according to our whatever computer science teacher pre incrementation always happens first and post incrementation always happens in the end same for the second uh, case but uh, nope uh, actually it's uh, connected with the term of uh, sequencing uh, and uh, it's uh, absolutely up to the compiler when it uh, happens and to your optimization flux in most cases uh, so uh, yeah relying on uh, accessing and uh, then the variable and then changing its value at uh, some time which is uh, up to the compiler we are using is uh, asking for trouble just uh, one thing uh, i can say here is that i tested this behavior with uh, gcc and clank and in most of the cases actually post incrementation took part as uh, the last step uh, so it was fine but uh, let's say even if you have some warranty from the compiler you don't have any warranty from the standard it will work fine it may work fine uh, for your uh, mainstream compiler but then you will switch to some uh, bare metal platform and boom it breaks so and then you are angry and uh, you are uh, googling what's wrong and uh, and uh, yeah, you just uh, lose uh, faith in uh, computer science. Uh, so don't uh, do this uh, or uh, make your code uh, any more uh, sequential. It's uh, not uh, always the best uh, strategy to use, uh, let's say, cool one-liners. Uh, and also it's uh, pretty obfuscated uh, what I'm saying uh, as maintainer of many lines of code which uh, was uh, wrote was written this way uh, one more connected term is this division between safe languages and uh, unsafe uh, languages uh, there are safe languages uh, like uh, java or rust in safe mode where errors are always caught uh, as they appear and uh, you have some really nice exception system I started writing in Java exactly last month and I saw many errors and exceptions being caught uh, exactly as they appear and uh, then the program uh, usually just terminated with a given exception. There are also unsafe languages where errors are not uh, trapped and uh, even though uh, something happens uh, program uh, is allowed it doesn't mean that it will always proceed because you can wrap it in try catch block and, and then throw an exception but the uh, program is uh, allowed to proceed despite uh, any critical despite any critical error taking place at the moment and uh, yeah C++ is strongly unsafe and uh, it's partially a reason of uh, this uh, tech talk uh, and even uh, one undefined behavior error may cause entire program to become uh, meaningless and potentially dangerous. Uh, I saw uh, really paranoid uh, posts on Stack Overflow of uh, people being afraid that uh, they got undefined behavior on their processor and does it mean that they need to throw away their computer and uh, get a new one and uh, even though in uh, most cases uh, the worst thing uh, you can get from a programmer's perspective is 
getting some uh, rubbish output of uh, one method, which will be caught uh, later on. The actual threat is that many software vulnerabilities, which uh, I will talk a bit about later on as well, started as uh, this sort of uh, undefined uh, behavior thing, which was uh, misused as an attack vector. Yes, yeah, so such bad things are also possible. And uh, yeah, the question is, why is that? Uh, so yeah, I will also talk uh, more about uh, this later on. But uh, back in times when uh, C was created, computers were really slow. And all sorts of uh, bulk operations, uh, which would make uh, in any initial uh, value assignment, like a default one, it would mean that uh, the program uh, becomes uh, slower. And we use uh, C and C++ for uh, faster runtime performance. So we don't have this functionality, even though uh, nowadays we don't have such slow computers and the initialization cost is almost none. Still, it's a matter of the scale. Most probably for some uh, GPU heavy computations, it, I doubt uh, the cost of uh, array and vector initialization would be non-significant to the actual performance. Anyway, uh, it was, initially a performance issue and uh, yeah there is also a different approach uh, here you may think of uh, using C++ as uh, running with uh, an egg. You can run uh, very fast uh, if you just uh, skip some checks, uh, like you don't always make sure that the value you're reading uh, is uh, within the bounds of an array. And yeah, you can just go faster, but uh, it's also possible that uh, you will fumble and your egg will uh, fall somewhere and you will be in a big uh, troubles. Uh, there's also a topic uh, which is uh, really problematic for optimization, which is, uh, I mean, it's really complicated. I will just uh, say the term because it's a great topic for another tech talk. Uh, strict aliasing, uh, making sure that uh, array we are creating uh, will never overlap with uh, each other. Anyway, uh, performance gain due to skipping these checks is uh, really big, uh, especially if uh, we use uh, loops which uh, have many iterations and are heavy using uh, all available resources. So yeah, it's a trade-off. Uh, we are going really fast and energy efficient, uh, but uh, we need to trust people more that uh, they fully know what they're doing. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's <laughs> not, like with everything. Here is a list of uh, undefined behavior patterns, which are, uh, let's say, computer science 101 things, and uh, you rather will find them by static analysis. Although, of course, it's not always the case, unfortunately. So as I said, doing anything involving current value of a variable, which is not initialized, accessing array beyond its bounds, the referencing a null pointer, I believe me, it happened several times even within the Linux kernel code, doing a double delete, it's bad because if you delete something for the first time, and uh, then uh, some, val some different object uh, may be available under the address of the deleted one. So if you delete it for the second time, you just delete this uh, innocent object that just happened to be there. Also doing uh, a lot of row pointer arithmetic uh, may be problematic, uh, especially if you do it uh, between pointers from two different uh, arrays. Honestly, I've never seen such code uh, in a production. Uh, also don't uh, multiply pointers. Some people try to do this. I don't know what is the reason, but uh, don't do this. Uh, it's uh, asking for trouble. 
And there are also some uh, more tricky undefined behavior patterns, uh, which are not, let's say, as obvious. Uh, so you can, uh, as I mentioned before, do some post and pre-incrementation and uh, rely on it in your core part of the logic uh, of your application. And uh, then uh, it may uh, break because compiler optimization level decided that uh, some of them don't take place in the very beginning or end of evaluation of this exact line of code. There's a lot of uh, undefined behavior in uh, multi-threading, like race condition things. I was actually talking about it in February, so if anyone is interested, feel free to find uh, my previous tech talk somewhere. And uh, yeah, let's uh, keep infinite loops with no side effects for the for the end. Uh, doing uh, crazy bitwise shifts is also problematic. Uh, yeah, let's just assume that uh, even if uh, integer size of your platform is, uh, let's say, four bytes, you are absolutely allowed to do a bitwise shift uh, for even 1000 bytes. And uh, in some cases, you will just get a warning that what you are doing is uh, really dumb. But uh, yeah, it's allowed to do this. No idea about uh, its uh, application and the gains of doing it, but it's possible from the standard perspective. Uh, you can also try to take address of uh, main function, and uh, it is a bit tricky. Now, like a bonus question, why do you think it's tricky? Again, time for a water break and for you to have a moment to think about it. Um, sorry, but let, let me just clarify a little bit the question. So you just like getting the address of main function yeah. or getting and executing it, let's say, from some place of your code. Because you are allowed to do it, it's a function like every other function, but why is it discouraged to do so? Okay, your answer is uh, really boring uh, because uh, main uh, function is never supposed uh, to be a recurrent function. So if you call it in some recursive loop, uh, weird things may happen. Yeah, again, I've never seen any application trying to do this or uh, even trying to get uh, the address of main function, but uh, according to the standard, it's an undefined behavior. Again, uh, when you do some uh, example of uh, such behavior and you try to execute it with uh, modern GCC or Clang, uh, I don't see anything wrong with it, but it doesn't mean that under some circumstances uh, it uh, will go wrong. Yeah, and also uh, one more obvious, uh, less obvious case is uh, assuming that uh, anything uh, happens uh, once uh, your uh, integer or any numeric values experiences uh, overflow. Here we strongly depend on the platform we are using because uh, sometimes we will just overlap and uh, start over from the lowest value and sometimes the value will just be saturated uh, and uh, C standard, C, uh, C or C++ standard doesn't specify what is the only accepted behavior in case of uh, integer overflow. But yeah, you are allowed to, to increment or decrement any, any numeric value as much as you like. Uh, just like with uh, crazy bitwise uh, shift, uh, there are no limits, but uh, sometimes it uh, may be pointless. And uh, yeah, regarding uh, using infinite loops with no side effects, uh, here the problem is uh, not exactly that uh, in each case uh, it will break, 
but uh, it will be the first construction which will be optimized uh, out uh, by many opt optimization levels uh, what we'll see later on because uh, it may result in some really problematic behavior and uh, yeah still somebody may say that ah okay but uh, all the examples you are launching on uh, safe uh, x64 computer on gcc and silang are actually some funny things and uh, just you get a funny value so what's the matter and uh, yeah Actually, there were at least uh, two really big uh, vulnerabilities which started as an undefined behavior. The dirty pipe one uh, appeared, I think it was three years ago, around uh, 5.8 uh, version of Linux kernel, because uh, somebody was refactoring uh, code left uh, one field of a structure uninitialized uh, somehow it slipped through all the compiler checks as well as all the extensive testing as well as uh, kernel code reviews so uh, yeah uh, a lot of respect for that and uh, it turned out to be a really important field which uh, was related with inter-process communication then as a result, uh, it was absolutely possible that as a standard user with uh, no additional permissions, uh, you could uh, change uh, many values uh, of something you should not be allowed uh, to be touched. There was also one more uh, CVOE, which was a real problem, and it was connected with uh, dereferencing a null pointer. So, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it gets uh, really tricky, especially if uh, uh, mainstream operating <laughs> systems are involved and uh, it should uh, never be underestimated that it's something uh, not related to our code uh, at all. Yeah, so now time for a short question. Uh, how many exact cases of undefined behavior are listed in a C99 uh, standard? I guess that in the modern uh, standard, the number stays the same. Okay, mostly it boils down to if uh, these are only few or is there more of them than I listed. And uh, for those for you who said, uh, I think it was B, you were right. And uh, some of these undefined behavior things are really problematic. Like I would never guess it. Uh, yeah, modulo zero is undefined behavior. The second one was uh, really odd for me. So it means uh, Preprocessing directive, not starting with a letter. And the third one is really tricky because it's also connect connected with uh, integer max value, which is uh, mostly platform specific in most of the cases. There are many, many more of them. What uh, I saw when reading the list is that many of them were connected uh, with uh, variadic functions uh, and uh, variadic uh, directives. So please be cautious when doing them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's go to a really crazy undefined behavior pattern. Let's maybe even, okay. I will not uh, switch uh, right now because all the code is here. And uh, here we have some uh, pretty standard short main function, which uh, only does uh, do. We have some static function do, which is uh, just a standard uh, function technique, no arguments and returning an integer. And uh, we have some really crazy things going on within uh, some other function, which is uh, generated and some even a different uh, never called function. So what's the matter? We are just doing uh, do here, which is static. 
And uh, yeah, the question is, uh, do you see why anything suspicious may take place in this piece of code? Is that because of some stack shenanigans? Uh, in this case, not. Anyway, here what uh, might but uh, doesn't have to happen is that uh, we have a function do. All our functions are, I mean, these two functions are static. So uh, the compiler cannot say, okay, I will search for any do in a different uh, compilation unit because here, thanks to the static keyword, we are limited to this one and uh, we need to return do. And uh, we are desperate to take any do, which is uh, not uh, assigned at this point. So we are desperately looking for anything that sets do. And oh yeah, here is a never called method and it actually assigns something to do. And uh, yeah, it makes sense. So yay, now where is all is our do. And uh, in such way, we can call code, which is to be never called or even potentially dangerous, like in this case. I mean, in this case, only if we run it as a root, which is not a thing uh, anyone does unless somebody is looking for a really bad adventure. And uh, yeah, it's an absolutely legit yet complicated option to call a code we were never supposed to call in the first place. And uh, yeah, uh, you don't get any compilation errors in here, maybe some warnings depending on your compiler, and uh, you will end up having uh, many things removed. Actually, in this particular case, uh, one more uh, way of staying safe is to execute this code or win on Windows, but it doesn't uh, solve the main uh, problem of calling a code that should uh, stay absolutely dead. Yeah, so let's go to another question. Is it uh, an error and uh, what are its advantages? Uh, I think I already answered <laughs> both of these questions uh, in the previous part of the lecture. So, uh, uh, in, so in one case, undefined behavior is an error and the compiler vetoes uh, everything uh, what uh, may be an undefined behavior. And uh, it's connected to constant expressions. Constant expressions are limited in such a way that uh, they exclude uh, anything that uh, may have undefined behavior, like a crazy point pointer arithmetic. Uh, here, uh, the reason is uh, pretty obvious uh, that uh, it's evaluated during compilation time and uh, making some undefined behavior things uh, during compilation time may not only break your program, but uh, may also make a compiler do some undefined behavior results. And uh, it's better not to start with things uh, because uh, it will make your compiler break so that uh, your undefined behavior code uh, would uh, be capable of causing undefined behavior even uh, before it's uh, launched. It's not, uh, not a situation uh, anyone should uh, be in. And uh, one more takeaway message uh, from this requirement is that uh, if you are not sure and uh, or you have a lot of uh, code uh, too much to statically analyze, uh, just uh, try to wrap it in a const expert and uh, then uh, try to compile. I have never used this check, but I saw many people recommend it uh, as some sort of a really easy sanitizer. And uh, yeah, as I said, these are possible results of undefined behavior. In the best case, you will just get a wrong uh, outcome. Other possibilities uh, are different outcome every time. It's not that bad. Getting sometimes correct output, sometimes a completely wrong. Uh, you may also get correct output uh, with a randomly crashers program. 
your output may be correct, but uh, if you change something uh, completely different, uh, application breaks out of nowhere. Also, sometimes a uh, common symptom is that uh, something runs fine, but only in a debug mode and in a release mode, uh, you use a different optimization plug and uh, you are getting all the perks of having undefined behavior. And uh, one more thing, uh, like in my white whale case, uh, you may have a system working fine for years and then getting random errors, uh, which are impossible to, uh, to even uh, investigate or reproduce, uh, but uh, breaking uh, several uh, hundred or thousands of uh, dollars of value pieces of equipment. And uh, anyway, uh, always getting a wrong outcome is the best thing uh, you may get out of uh, undefined behavior, apart from uh, making it possible for compiler to generate code, uh, which is uh, much uh, faster by skipping all the checks. Yeah, there is also uh, official FAQ from C++, also mentioning uh, that there is no warranty, anything may happen, and uh, it's even extended that uh, once you get one undefined behavior, the rest of your program may go completely wrong. And uh, yeah, you're on your own and uh, you need to just deal with the problem. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, like in case of this uh, endless loop with uh, no side effects, uh, sometimes uh, undefined behavior connected with uh, optimization may mean uh, even more problematic uh, situations. Uh, oh, I had some TBD which I forgot to erase, so sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, compiler may take away some pieces of your code and uh, prioritize uh, the line containing undefined behavior. Also, a good hint uh, if something's wrong is to try to run the same code with a lower uh, optimization flag to check if same errors uh, appear. If no, that uh, it may be a combo of undefined uh, behavior being uh, magnified by optimization flag you're using. Here is an uh, example of a situation which I also reproduced. Uh, unfortunately, I reproduced it uh, yesterday and uh, I was uh, just uh, sitting for half an hour and refreshing until something wrong happens. Uh, anyway, if you compile this uh, code with uh, no additional optimization, you just get uh, stuck in main in this while loop, while loop, which is uh, completely expected behavior. But uh, if uh, you try to add uh, more uh, advanced uh, optimization, I usually went with O2 or O3, sometimes uh, you reached the un unreachable function. And why was that? Yeah, here is a proof from uh, Godbolt from uh, yesterday that uh, actually this thing uh, happened. The trouble was that uh, this uh, while loop was optimized out as something completely not needed because it uh, doesn't produce uh, any side effects. And uh, then uh, somehow the unreachable function was reached uh, anyway. Yeah, also, uh, when can it be important? Uh, for example, if uh, you are doing any debug uh, checks uh, on uh, your bare metal applications, where it's typical to just uh, stop after some conditions if you are doing some fast uh, testing or whatever. And yeah, you need to keep in mind that uh, infinite loops with no side effects are one of the first constructs to be taken away. And uh, it may lead to some uh, dead code uh, being executed. If this dead code is just printing one line, then fine. If it's formatting your hard drive, then it's not something I would recommend. And uh, yeah, let's go to the final message of today's presentation. 
there are some ways to detect undefined uh, behavior. Uh, you can analyze it statically. You can you need, always need to check compiler warnings, uh, do a lot of testing, which is pretty obvious. Uh, use a lot of linters, uh, you can also use uh, sanitizers. Uh, there are many sanitizers, uh, the most common uh, in this case is just undefined behavior sanitizer, but you can also check memory address sanitizers, for example. I think that in both uh, GCC and Clank's uh, modern versions, uh, you can uh, use, uh, use them a lot. It's always better to use uh, more than one. And uh, yeah, general message uh, out of this lecture is how to stay safe. So using, if uh, you want to get a quick check, you can apply const exp constant expressions. Generally constant expressions are cool and uh, I encourage to apply them whenever pos wherever possible. Uh, if you are aware of uh, some situations that may lead to undefined behavior, it is better to stay cautious and just uh, don't uh, do many nice uh, one-liners in your code, uh, which may get so obfuscated that uh, some parts of their behavior will be up to the compiler you're using because you are never sure if uh, your compiler won't change in the future. Remember to check compiler warnings or just uh, compile everything with a W or all and W error. But remember that these two flags doesn't warranty you getting uh, all possible warnings. Usually the list is much longer. And uh, yeah, remember that uh, compilers are not required to diagnose uh, anything, although uh, they will inform you about simple situations. And moreover, uh, remember that uh, in most cases, uh, your operating system or uh, memory unit uh, will just uh, screech and uh, not allow to any suspicious uh, operations uh, taking place but it uh, doesn't mean that uh, you are absolutely sure to check uh, whatever memory address uh, you are assigned, uh, assuming that uh, they are a safety net, which will always catch it. Also remember the fact that something is reported on one platform doesn't mean it's reported on all the platforms. And uh, one more thing, uh, which, uh, Oh, also uh, remember that order in which the function arguments are evaluated is not specified, especially doing a lot of uh, post and pre-incrementation. And uh, it's important to always uh, check uh, inputs for all your functions uh, and uh, assume that uh, your whatever framework may get some rubbish data. So it's great to be a safety net of uh, the processing unit, uh, just uh, catch uh, some rubbish data or at least uh, document uh, some values which are not allowed. Good thing is that uh, coding standards like uh, MISRA C provide you a lot of, uh, maybe not equipment, uh, a lot of uh, hints and uh, situations uh, and uh, additional restrictions. Uh, making undefined behavior even less uh, likely to happen. And uh, yeah, there is a final message, uh, which is uh, not really optimistic because undefined behavior and handling it is the responsibility of every developer. And uh, it was uh, part of the strings attached that uh, came to choosing uh, C++ as an implementation language. So yeah, it's uh, the end of my presentation and uh, I'm waiting for your questions. Uh, if you want, uh, I can uh, run some uh, more examples from the presentation uh, live uh, to see if uh, we get some uh, suspicious uh, values as the outcome. Yeah, I have one. So is that uh, a loop optimization, which leads to uh, code being executed, isn't that more like, you know, a compiler bug uh, from the looks of it? I mean, it, it uh, makes Yeah, sense. here 
it's uh, mostly connected to I don't exactly remember uh, its uh, optimization flux uh, priorities and uh, also compilers are dumb because they do ex uh, they do first of all everything to compile the program even if the program will end up as a totally uh, useless one and uh, uh, it just does the static analysis. Uh, I assume that the logic here is that, uh, okay, we are, uh, we want to get uh, execution speed or maybe application size. So we will uh, delete uh, everything that uh, doesn't produce any assignment nor side effects. And if there's an empty while loop, it uh, doesn't provide uh, or translate to any meaningful assembly instructions. It's just uh, waiting uh, endlessly. Thank you. OK, thanks. Any other questions? I may add that I found uh, like literally five minutes before this presentation a nice uh, example from a guy on LinkedIn who is a C++ uh, super master and uh, he added uh, one more thing which I left out in my presentation that uh, sometimes uh, everything is uh, perfect uh, in your code, but uh, you are getting an implementation specific result. Uh, and uh, these are these cases when you need to go even one level lower to checking how your PCB is created or how your timers work. I will send you the post uh, later on because it was too late to embed it into my presentation. But here it was connected uh, with uh, calculating uh, logarithms and doing some lower level mathematical operation and the, the difference in the results was connected with uh, doing uh, some uh, iterating until timer does something and uh, different platforms used uh, different timers so that the result was completely different. But it's a really paranoid situation, yet it's uh, possible in some cases as well. I think you uh, you could add this information uh, to blog post. Sure. I, mm -hmm, super. Uh, so uh, I would like to say thank 